Hey, how's it going? It's Keith Townsend from the CTOadvisor.com. And you're watching another CTO sponsored by Daytrum. We're on premises where we've been doing a series of interviews. If you followed us at all, we've been at VMware, uh, talked to their product staff and from the cloud BU all the way to the networking BU. And we're also, also talking to the ecosystem of partners for VMware, which one of them is Datrium, who's sponsoring this video. So, Andre, thanks a lot for uh, joining us. And Mike, uh, I don't know if I've had either of you on the CTO Advisor before. Yeah. So, Mike, go ahead and introduce yourself. So, thanks, Keith. Uh, Mike McLaughlin. I'm the Director of Technical Marketing here. And uh, I basically head up a lot of the solutions that we test and validate run our demo labs, do a lot of our reference architectures, white papers. I get to play with the product a lot. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm a VP for Solutions and Alliances. So uh, all the strategy around partnerships, uh, what we do with those partners, how many partners we need, how deep we go with them, uh, the work we do with VMware, um, SAP, Oracle, um, and also solutions. Uh, we're part of the same team. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's talk about Specifically, one of those alliances. So I, I kind of my curiosity got peaked when you said SAP because I'm a I'm a old school SAP guy. My last full time job was SAP infrastructure architect. But with that said, ecosystem is critically important when you're talking about HCI, open converge. There's vendors out there trying to create their own ecosystem, and then there's you guys who are more of you you you're like data protection storage cloud is key pillars of your solution and then you integrate with partners let's talk about your integration with vmware where do you innovate and add value in the vmware stack yeah no uh that's a good question uh, first of all it's important to understand that um customers only buy infrastructure because of the applications right right no if there's no applications there's no infrastructure right um so we need to live by the applications. So we need to make sure that we work with them, we perform for them, ultimately they serve the users. Um, so we do support VMware as a hypervisor. Uh, with that, we have the entire VMware ecosystem. Uh, we not only support, but we integrate into VMware. You have that, the single experience from a operational perspective. So when you start talking about OPEX and you know, mitigating the number of different people to manage the infrastructure, um, we solve that piece. The way we innovate with VMware is we enable VMware to scale where they have never been before. So some of our performance benchmarks that you will see out there, scaling um, storage in VMware to 128 servers and performing in a way that nobody has done before. And the way we do that is, you know, Technically speaking, the, uh, with the ability to scale compute independent of capacity. So, Mike, I'm, I'm going to push that back. I'm going to push back a little bit on that. 128 nodes. You're the marketing guy. You're right. the technical marketing guy. <laughs> right. How do you prove that out? You're like that's 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 rather large. Like a vSAN node. vSAN is a great solution. It only goes up to about 32 nodes, I think. Right. 128 sounds like. It's a lot. It is a lot. A lot. It's, it's a pretty big cluster. It's a pretty, pretty big infrastructure right. to run applications on. And uh, we actually did that one uh, live with some other partners. We went and built one. I mean, our systems grow to 128. So this is not a theoretical one. No. You guys actually did this. We racked up a bunch of servers, networked them, started them all up, ran different workloads, and really pushed the boundaries of not only the compute level, but also the storage level. So you can scale out compute to 128 nodes to get the applications running. We also can scale out our back end to 10 data nodes. So we actually put that all together as well. It was a fairly large investment in, in our time, resources, and a couple of our partners out in a, another large state in the union uh, where we set that up and tested it. The results are posted. But yeah, we had to build one of those. I mean, that's kind of what we do on this side is prove this out. We'll build even small scale one host all the way up to large scale full on DBXs. Uh, so let's talk about practical use cases for a lot of not just the scale, yeah. but a management capabilities. Andre, I love the fact that you said that infrastructure only exists because of the applications. So let's talk about application specific use cases. What are customers finding the most use for Datrium DVX 
or what are some of the pain points in specific applications that Datrium DVX uh, solves? I, I personally, I love to hear the SAP story because I can easily relate to that. Yeah. Um, the way I think about applications and business outcomes is you need to remove the pain uh, to focus on, on the business, right. right? So you need to remove infrastructure pain. And now many vendors will tell, oh, we automate these, we do that. The, the real truth is that the crux is performance. The, the biggest cause of, of uh, applications failing over time is performance. So if you remove that, that's the first step, right? Right. So we know that Datrium performs well, and you know more than any system out there, and it can scale to you know these amazing performance numbers that I don't even know any application that would require all that to run today. Uh, the second piece is okay. We know that we can do that. Now we need to go and validate all these applications. And you'll see many of these, you know, business critical applications or life critical applications that they try to run in converged infrastructures before, and they failed because performance was not there and high availability was not there and there was no features like snapshotting and there are certain yeah. aspects that need to be there. Um, and, and you look, you know, talk to SAP and talk about HANA or you talk to Epic Systems and there are others, they don't support convergence today because it failed in the past. Right. So now we are in that momentum where, okay, we've got a great solution, uh, but some of those core applications are still not supported in conversion, conversion architectures all the same. And um, I don't blame them. You know, it failed in the past. So now we are in that process, okay, we have something new, we have something more innovative, we have something that address performance, address scalability, address you know, snapshotting, data replication, data management. We need to redo it now. That said, I'm talking about a few applications out there that um, require all that. For the large majority of applications, um, uh, it's fully supported today in converged in converged architectures. You now, as as for SAP, we we you know they supported the one business suite on VMware with Daydream. Um, you now, Epic we'll see Epic uh, supporting hyperspace and VDI on on Daydream and other platforms right. as well. Um, and there are other other applications out there. Now the use cases from a verticals perspective, it goes like from you know finance, oil and gas and healthcare uh, to media. Um, you know, we have for healthcare have packed systems with a large data capacity. We have uh, media companies using uh, for video streaming. So uh, it's the broad range of use cases that we, we cover today. So yeah. we've talked a lot in the past with Yugo and Tushar about cloud DVX and how the integration goes along with that. Let's talk about the ecosystem application view. How does something like if taking Datrium DVX extend out to a cloud DVX? Technically, when you're talking about application support, where's the value of a cloud DVX in that ecosystem? Yeah, so the cloud DVX is, is, is our system that has been virtualized and put it on AWS to start with. Um, the second piece is we have what's called we call global deduplication. So data is never duplicated independent where the where the DVX is running, if it's on prem or in the cloud. So now you can imagine that to make cloud backup and cloud DR and you know, and be able to burst data to cloud so you can reinstantiate in like in the DR scenario, you need to have that deduplication across your environments. Otherwise you're moving terabytes of data mm -hmm. and that's just not gonna work. Right, so you want to make sure that you move only one bit of data if required. What Cloud DVX does today is we enable you to replicate all your data with snapshots to AWS, store there in a very cheap way manner, and be able to restore that whenever you need in your site or in a DR site. That's the first stage. You can foresee us using that data to instantiate also DR in the cloud. Okay, so. Before recording, we talked a bit about kind of the work you guys were doing with VMware from a paper or research perspective. Can you tell us a little bit about the work that you guys did combined with VMware? 
Yeah, actually, Mike was uh, responsible for the large majority <laughs> of the work. Yeah. <laughs> you, you weren't out there actually. Uh, I, I can tell, but it was <laughs> silly <laughs> his show. Yeah. Andre's done this before too. So, no, we recently, so one of the applications um, that we looked at was virtual desktops, Horizon. Um, there's actually two that we've seen in our customer base that actually sort of take advantage of the platform. Um, when you look at the applications, uh, databases and uh, desktops. Databases have high latency dependencies and putting flash on the host makes those just scream. Desktops have the user experience. Right. And the more users you pile into a virtualized environment, the less you want to worry about the storage I.O. All right, so our architecture puts that up on the host. So flash on the host kind of takes storage I.O. off the table. So we were able to look at building out uh, how you would scale that application in an environment from just a single host you know, potentially up to 128, but let's just say up to something like, you know, a couple of thousand users, all right? And look at not only just the, the vetting of the testing and making that work and hitting all of the goals of user experience and, you know, time to do certain operations, but also how the, the, the platform grows uh, as, an, as a customer might. So as, as you add more users, you can add more hosts. Okay. Uh, the flexibility of our platform actually lets you sort of pick those hosts to suit the needs. So there's a lot of simple things in the way the DVX is set up that we pushed out in this reference architecture for Horizon. So what we wanted to do is give our, get, basically give our customers kind of a line in the sand that says, if this is what you're looking at, here's what you can expect to get, and then here's where you can go if you need more horsepower or you need like GPUs or you need more density. Here's how you make those choices. So the reference architecture it's just that. It gives you a reference point of a particular application on the uh, on the DBX platform. Now, now here's so. where it's interesting. This is not a just Datum uh, paper that we released. Yeah. This is a joint Datum and VMware work, yeah. which proves that we can coexist. We can work together. VMware has no vSAN. We've got our own product. Right. You know, and we can coexist. The, the ecosystem that VMware vSphere drives yeah. is just enormous, it's gigantic, and it's awesome to be part of that. Yeah, yeah I love the story. The, a lot of times we'll get into this debate about markets that VMware gets into and whether or not that, that competes with customers. But I think VMware has shown repeatedly that, you know what, you can take our solution, but if you want to build on top of vSphere and yeah. move out from vSphere, we're perfectly okay with yeah. that. And I think the the combination of Datrium, DVX, vSphere, yeah. and Horizon shows that commitment yeah. to the alliance. Yeah. So I really appreciate the work that Mike, that you, you and your team has done with VMware. Yeah. I'm yeah. anxious to dig in, pull, pull the bits and pieces apart yeah. and, you know, pick at it a little bit. I like, right. I like challenging you guys a little right. bit, but you, you, you surprised me with the 128 node, yeah. the, the piece. I'm, I'm glad I wasn't there to pull any cables. Uh, I'm glad I didn't have to haul that equipment out and back either. So <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was it was truckloads for a couple of days. <laughs> Logistically, 129 nodes. I, I have a problem just keeping my iMac cable correctly. <laughs> well, that's it for this CTO dose. If you want to find out more about Datrium, you can visit them on the web, datrium.com. Twitter handle for a startup is pretty simple. At Twitter, I mean at Datrium on Twitter, you can follow more about the CTO Advisor, the CTOadvisor.com, where you can subscribe to the blog, podcast, and of course, the CTO Daily Dose. Talk to you next dose.